Thanks for watching This Week in Discovery News. I'm Trace, and we're going to follow Felix Baumgartner on the highest skydive ever. We're also going to explain why there won't ever be a Jurassic Park. Sorry, guys. And I'm going to tell you why there are holes in these skulls. It's a pretty cool reason. Extreme skydiver Felix Baumgartner is going to try and break the high altitude skydive record this Sunday, and you can watch it live on Discovery News. Previous record holder, U.S. Air Force Captain Joe Kittinger, set the record 52 years ago in 1960. It currently stands at 102,000 feet. Kittinger is actually helping out Baumgartner, and if everything goes to plan, he's not just going to break the record, he's going to smash it and go at 120,000 feet. The Red Bull Stratus team is billing this as a jump from the edge of space, which isn't entirely accurate. Space begins about 62 miles up, and even that figure is a little bit debated. He's jumping from 20 23 miles up, which is, which is, you know, still pretty high. A massive balloon, the largest to ever carry a human, is going to be filled with some helium. That's going to lift a capsule containing cameras, communications equipment, and life support systems with Baumgartner inside. Once it gets to altitude, he's going to disconnect from the capsule, open the door, and look out over the Earth. When he's there, he'll have to decide if he wants to jump or not. If everything's a go, Felix will jump. He's going to go head first, which means he'll break the sound barrier in about 40 seconds. Yes, he will create a sonic boom, but he won't hear it because he's going to be going faster than sound. He'll spend the next five and a half minutes in freefall, which is of course the longest ever recorded. After that, he needs to slow himself down to about 172 miles an hour so he can safely open his parachute. They canceled their attempt on Tuesday because the wind was too strong. See, the balloon fabric is thinner than a plastic sandwich bag, and if it tears, they only have one backup. Tune in to discoverynews.com slash stratus for all of our coverage and to watch it live on discoverynews.com. You can also watch the jump live on the Discovery Channel. Now that we've got your hopes up and your imagination is on fire, let's crush it. Okay, you guys, I swear, science does not ruin everything. You remember that cool skydiving story we just did? So this is like a band-aid. I'm just gonna tear it off. I'm just gonna rip it off. I'm just gonna do it. There's never gonna be a Jurassic Park. It's okay. I know. It's okay. Sorry. No Jurassic Park though. Sorry. Pull yourself together. No, I'll wait. So here's the deal. Scientists in Australia wanted to know how long DNA lasts. See, DNA can decay. Think of it like a pumpkin that you left on your porch for too long. Eventually, it would decay into nothing. Molecules are the same way. What we didn't know was how long it takes DNA to decay. So scientists took 158 fossilized leg bones from these flightless birds called moa, and they compared the decay rates of the DNA inside. Half-life means the amount of time it takes for something to decay by half. So it turns out a strand of DNA's half-life is 521 years. So those Jurassic Park scientists would have to fill in 50% of the original DNA with their frog DNA after only 521 years, and these samples are way older. 65 million years? The original DNA would be, well, squat. A couple of bones and some frog DNA doesn't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world, but we'll always have Isla Nublar. One positive thing to come out of this study is that the DNA decay rate is actually slower than they thought it was. And of course, they didn't take into account the mosquitoes in amber thing from Jurassic Park, so who knows? Maybe. No. Travel over to discoverynews.com slash no Jurassic Park for all the details. And now, just in time for the scary season, I bring you Skulls. No, not that fantastic movie, The Skull, starring breakout Mighty Duck star Josh Jackson. We're talking about Aztec skulls. 50 skulls and 250 jawbones were found in Temple Mayor in Tenochtitlan, which is modern-day Mexico City. They got there by human sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, really, they did. The remains date back more than 500 years and were found near a sacrificial stone, the name of which I'm not even going to try and pronounce. Usually, people were killed on these stones by cutting open their chest and pulling out their heart. And decapitations were actually really rare. Some of the skulls looked as if they were being prepared to become skull masks, but the process was never finished. Hey boss, where should I put all these skulls? Just throw them over there. We'll make masks out of them after I talk to this Cortez jerk. Okay. The skulls belong to both women and men between 20 and 35 years old, and they had holes on either side, which means they were probably part of a zompantli. Zompantli? Zomp I don't know. A zompantli is a rack where you would put a pole through the skulls and then display them, kind of like a giant 
cranial abacus. To see all the ritualistic craziness, visit discoverynews.com slash Aztec Skulls. So that's all for this week. If you want more of our coverage, make sure that you like us on Facebook, that you follow us on Twitter, and that you check out our Tumblr. You can also subscribe to our Discovery Daily Newsletter and get our headlines in your inbox every morning. Subscription options and social media links are at discoverynews.com. Keep commenting and tweeting. I see them all and have a great week. We'll see you next time. Why I'm doing like this politician thing. Or both. Or neither. Stomach of a God, whoever wrote that makes so much sense. Um, what's my motivation? Stupid oh. is fine. Scary I didn't really expect. <laughs> no, that's a new word. <laughs> Dream skydiver. <laughs>